My name is Stephen King. Spend some time in the dark. Please don't let us be in the dark. I'm gonna scare the hell out of you. And that's a promise. Welcome to Castle Rock Radio. I am Max Booth. <laughs> and that is my uh, co-host, Lloyd Michelle. <laughs> this is the Stevie King Podcast. We'll be full some reason can't do intros anymore without laughing for absolutely no reason. So today's episode, we'll talk you about... Uh, <laughs> what are we talking about? Word processor of the gods. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... After this brief <laughs> transition, we will be talking about that thing. Hopefully, we will be calm. I apologize, but this is this is what do you call it in a film? Where you do, oh, this is like take eighty two <coughs> of the intro. <laughs> she Good just Lord. cop phlegm on me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what is happening in the studio? <coughs> okay. Bye. Bye. See you soon. In a second. <clears throat> okay, I, I think we all are now a bit we're, more controlled. Yes. I don't know what was exactly happening, but I figured we just had to go ahead and recall the intro because we have been trying to do that for a long time. Yeah, well, you know. And there's no guest today, so I don't know if we even needed an intro. Um, you know who we are. Yeah. And now you know what we sound like laughing hysterically. Yeah, you may have listened to us laugh before. Not like that. usually really silly. Yes. Uh, of course. Uh, <laughs> we've had kind of a break since we recorded an episode. The last one we did was the Q&A on Halloween. It was. How is it already November 17th? I don't know. We've been kind of busy. <clears throat> First, we were at the Texas Lit Fest, and then just we've been trying to play catch up from that. I had to drive to Dallas to do a reading at the right. Wild Detectives. I have a competition this weekend that we're putting on, so. Uh, competition of what? Baton twirling. You teach baton? I don't teach baton, I teach them dance. You but teach dance? I do. What? I know. This is new Surprising, to me. isn't it? Yes, this is how we talk now in monotone. Okay. Today on the episode of Castle Rock Radio, we are discussing a short story called Build Processor of the Gods. Is that so? Yes. That sounds very Shut interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it was published originally in 1983 in Playboy magazine. Surprise! Seems to have published most of his 1980s fiction and nudie mags i think a lot of short stories were published in like playboy and penthouse because they, pay well. they paid well yeah. and i mean they're one of the few magazines that had decent circulation yeah but for fiction i'm you know not like time which is non-fiction um in playboy this is interesting uh it was published under the title the world processor Woo-hoo. that was it why was it changed? Was it originally a world process of all the gods and Playboy was like, let's change that? Or did he decide to change it after the fact? I don't know. We don't know. We don't have Stephen King on the line today. Damn it. When are we going to have him on the line? I don't know. That would be a very interesting episode. If we need to get a line. That would be true because... We nobody... can't have him on a line if we don't have a line. This is very true. We could get him on a cell phone. We could get him on Skype. I don't think he knows how to use Skype. Could be. All know. right, whatever. So this thing, it was published in Playboy, like we said. Then also collected in his 1985 collection, Skeleton Crew. Right. Which is maybe his best collection? Probably is. It's either that or Night Shift. Night Shift? <coughs> yeah. 
What about the other ones? The other ones that you can't think of the names of? Yeah. <laughs> what about those? I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> this is... We've been away too long. We've been away too long. We don't know how to do podcasts now. Too much Halloween. Is, is anyone listening anymore? <clears throat> Thomas is. Hi, Thomas. Hi, Thomas. Okay, let's get into this thing then. So, who is this about? This story is about a family. It's about a, a man. A man. Named Richard something. Yeah, he's got a funny last name. Hamstatten. Ha- Hagstrom. Hagstrom. It's about Richard Hagstrom, okay. Yeah, right. and, and uh, he lives, what, in Sebulbia? Somewhere, yeah. Some... They never they never really say where he lives. He probably lives in Maine. <laughs> you think so? Especially since <clears throat> Richard is a... F- one-time failed novelist <laughs> who also works as a high school English teacher. Surprise. With, now get this, a fat wife. Well, she must be the villain. <laughs> Her name in this epi- in this story is... Is Lena. Tabitha. Oh. Lena. Not uh, Tabitha. Oh. Lena. It is an anagram of Tabitha. How is Lena an ab- anagram of Tabitha? Think about it. I don't want to. <laughs> but yeah, we know immediately his wife sucks because she is obese. Right, and she just sits there. Meaning she is 180 pounds. Yeah, that's not obese, I'm sorry to tell you. <laughs> <sighs> she just sits around nagging. She uh, she refuses to get a job. And she spends most of the time at bingo, right? Yes. Winning frozen turkeys. Like, <laughs> hey, I guess this is probably a Thanksgiving story. It could be. Why would they well, be giving hope. away a frozen turkey in She said like, that April? she was at the Thanksgiving version of bingo that one time when she won the frozen turkey. But well, we are skipping ahead. Oh, well, we can skip ahead. It's okay. Well, we can okay. skip all the heads. <laughs> so he also has a, a shitty son named Seth. Right. Is it Seth? Yes. Okay, yeah. Um, he just a, he's a typical piece of shit. Like right. all, like all teenage olds. Yeah, ninety percent of teenagers. Yes. Ninety nine hundred. Ninety nine hundred. Yeah, he uh he's in a band. I don't know what does they ever get into. What the band's called? No. Some loud thrash rock of some type. Right. He's always upstairs practicing. Which hey, that's kind of good. It's good, but he's kind of taken over their living room and turned it into his rehearsal hall. His uh, bandmates are always coming over, and they always kind of just like talk shit about his dad. Right. Uh. But yeah, he once had a novel published. It didn't do too well. Right. I, I'm guessing it was a small press of some type. Not necessarily. Didn't get a lot of market, marketing yeah. done to it. But apparently he's written several short stories, which bring right. him money. So and what he's making, he says, what, 5000 5, a month? Yeah. This guy's doing all right. No, each year. Oh, each year. Okay. But still, that's still 50 bucks a month. I mean, that's still pretty decent. Pay some gas. Exactly. Build well, especially the gas back tank, then. Buy some fish tacos i don't know if fish tacos were a thing especially in maine like yeah i don't think so i don't think hipsters were invented yet <laughs> exactly <laughs> um, <laughs> he uh, also had his brother whose name is ralph uh yes is it i believe so roger Oh, same thing. Ralph, Roger. Um, and Ralph, fuck. Roger is married to Richard's long lost love. Right, Belinda. Belinda. Right. And they have a boy whose name was Jonathan. Was? What do you mean was? Was, because Roger, who was a piece of shit, drunkard, drove them in a van off a cliff. In the middle of the day, coming home from a family trip. Yes. Yes, so the story begins with uh, Richard coming home with some belongings from his brother's house, who is now dead, along with <clears throat> his uh, with uh, Ralph's Roger's <laughs> Roger. wife and son. They've all right. died in this crash, and he's he's always hated his brother. He was his bully to him. He was abusive to Belinda. Yeah, he and, was a shit to his son Jonathan. He was yeah. just a shit to everybody, basically. And he evidently, uh, Richard used to date Belinda, or he just or had he, a crush. I think he had a crush on her and, and I, was just afraid yeah, to say anything. Yeah, and at to one her. point, uh, Roger goes up to Richard and <laughs> basically tells him to lay off. He's gonna 
right. he's going to ask a lot in a date, and if he tries to do anything, he'll break his arm. Or... Yeah, he was constantly threatening to break Richard's arm, so... At one point, I think he uh, threw his magic eight ball against the right. sidewalk for no reason. He sounds really much like a Stephen King bully. Exactly. I'm surprised his name's not Henry or... <laughs> <laughs> Rogels pretty shitty. Let's yeah. be honest. Well, you know. No offense to all the Rogels, but we you'll Rogers, but you'll probably but... pretty shitty. Let's be <laughs> let's be honest. Yeah. So they get home. Uh, it's Richard comes back home with this old man who I think is the next door neighbor of his dead brother. Correct. What's his name? I forget. <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Nordhoff. Is that his name? That's what they say. <laughs> I mean, he Rich- doesn't have a first okay. name. So. They evidently they found this gold processor in the basement. Well, Mr. John had given all these boxes to Mr. Nordhoff, his neighbor. Oh, okay. And he said, make sure that my Uncle Richard gets this. It's for his birthday. So he made very specific, you know, make sure my Uncle Richard gets this. Like, almost as if he knew he was going to die. If you know you're going to die, don't get in the van. (laughs) Maybe he had no choice. Well, lots of ways to avoid that happening. So anyway, but then so Mr. Nordhoff, of course, gave it to Richard and they brought it in and it was a word processor. One that Jonathan has created himself. Right. Made out of many different uh, sections from metal machines. Right. Train sets and Radio Shack parts. He's uh, he's Frankensteined it. Exactly. And, uh... During the conversation when they get to the house, it's pretty obvious that the neighbor had a lot of emotions for this kid. Right. And I, how old was the kid? <clears throat> Fifteen. What's going on with this guy? What what type of relationship do they have? I don't know, but I at, mean... At one point, the guy says he loved him. All right. Well, I mean, if he was a good kid and he helped him out around the house, maybe... I don't know. Uh, it's a... Yeah. I don't know. I gathered it was more like a... Um, I'm get, a he felt uh, like he was a grandfather to him. I'm getting the whiff of some oh my God. type of... This Kevin, is not a political type scandal. Of Kevin Spacey thing going on. You've been influenced way too much by the media. <laughs> by the media? What <laughs> yes. are you going to say next? Fake news? The fake news. No. Uh, I also get the sense that he probably helped him with a lot of his projects. Yeah. Was, I think I think they viewed each other in like a grandfather grandson kind of relationship. Do you think we have a Back to the Future type of situation going on? Do you think he's Doc Brown? I, they the relationship ship is kind of similar. Yeah. If Jonathan doesn't die, does he grow up to be Molly McFly? Yes, yes, he does. That would be cool. <laughs> See, he, he knew he was gonna die too. He just didn't want to make that sold movie. <laughs> Well, the second one. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. I don't know where the hell we are. Uh, So Lena's like all, what the hell are you bringing into this house? And Richard's like, it's a present from Jonathan. She's like, yeah, whatever. You're just a no good hack. Basically, she just keeps putting him down about his quote unquote writing habit. (laughs) Yeah, his habit. (laughs) Yeah. That's an accurate way to describe it. (laughs) I, I guess he had, I want he has always wanted a real processor because it would save up time. He'd be able to make more money. Right. And but they cost a shit ton of money, like three grand and up. Yeah, it's okay. crazy. I, and of course, his wife has forbade him from ever buying one of those silly machines. Well, the thing is, she sits around all day doing nothing. He's at work. Trying to keep him afloat. Probably watching game shows, let's be honest. Probably. It's a Stephen King story. <laughs> when you're fat, you watch game shows. Apparently. <laughs> Everybody watches game shows. What are you talking about? We were watching about? game shows the other exactly. night. Exactly. But she's stuffing her face full of Twinkies. She's reading a, what it's called a bodice ripper what? Novi- novel. A bodice ripper novel. Okay. <laughs> you know, slut novel. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, again, with, with Stephen King and his fat kill, it's all... <laughs> right. He seems to think that if someone's overweight, they oh, just 
20 fill salmon, a perpetual motion machine of eating, for just constantly right. shoving food into the mouth. And you know, I know that's a common misconception, that if you're overweight, that you don't eat correctly, but it's not always yeah, true. Yeah, you're not, like, your hand isn't in a constant motion of shoving a Twinkie in your face. No, I feed. can't say I've eaten a Twinkie in, like, several years. Or any food. <laughs> If exactly. you did that, you would become the dude from Seven. <laughs> you would be... Yeah. Well, that's not sloth, that's the wrong Glutton. one. Gluttony. <laughs> yeah, you would also become a sloth. <laughs> Maybe so. And watch game shows mm. nightly. I would, I would watch game shows nightly. How come they don't play game shows How anymore? How come there's not a game show about sloths? <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> so you think you're a sloth. <laughs> Wouldn't that be reality TV and not a game show? I think it's called the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know. What was that game show about losing weight? Oh, The Biggest Loser? Yeah. Could be. Well, any re game show. <laughs> reality TV show. Right. That wasn't a game show about no. losing weight. <laughs> no, it was a reality show. That's what How I'm much saying. weight has Becky lost? <laughs> well, it kind of was a game show. <laughs> the because it says five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> because the more weight, if you lost the most weight, you were the winner. So I guess it sort of was a game show. I don't know. Why are we discussing this? <laughs> Because Stephen King loves talking about fat people, so that's we love talking about. Do you think she could seal feet when she walks? I don't know. If she was 180 pounds, yes. You can. Uh, I don't think Stephen King realizes that. I don't think so. I think he thinks 180 pounds. How much pounds does Stephen is... King weigh? He's a I big don't dude. Know. He's a pretty tall dude, but he is on the thin side, so. He's really tall, though. Yeah. He is. <laughs> oh, you dog. She's talking about an actual dog, not me. <laughs> we have a, a weenal dog begging attention. Yeah, that's all good weenal any, dogs Any time we try to do this podcast, they just make the most noise. He decides to lick his gums <laughs> as loudly as possible right next to the mic. It's important. He wants to be heard, too. He wants us to sit down on the couch, is what he wants. He's really confused when we sit at this microphone. He doesn't understand who we're talking to. Shut up. <laughs> okay, well, so the wife goes for bingo, right? Yeah, well, he sets up this machine, and he... Yeah, he sets it up, and... Uh, and he asks the yeah. neighbor guy, he says, do you think it works? And the neighbor's like, I don't know, Jonathan was kind of a genius, so it probably does. I mean, they had this whole discussion about kid geniuses. Yeah, yeah. So he says, I don't know, a kid can make time travel backwards. I'm sure Jonathan could make this word processor work. That's no foreshadowing for the movies. There you go. I'm telling you, he has a crush on this kid. <laughs> Do you think he has a DeLorean in his driveway? Maybe. It was the 80s. <laughs> it was, too. About so, the same uh, time the same movie was made. So I'm pretty envious of what this guy has. He has a shed in like, the yeah, back like of his house. separate room, yeah. Well, he has his writing studio at. I know you want one. That'd be really cool. One day we'll have one. Yeah. One day. Do you know how we could get one? If the audience listening donates to all Patreon at <laughs> www.patreon.com slash PMM Publishing. Hooray! Don't hurry yet. Okay. The episode hasn't gone live. I can they hurry if I want They don't know what we've said. True. We don't know if anyone's going to go donate now. Hmm. I don't know. Donate's the right world. Pledge, Pledge, I guess. Pledge. They're going to support us. Advertisement done. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. So he, set, he sets the uh, the world process all up in his writing shed. Well, he has a framed photograph of his wife and son. Right. It's his wife. Just his wife. Oh, uh, it's just his wife. Yeah, she insisted that if he's going to lock himself up into a study that he has to have a picture of her. Right, so she's always watching him. Yes, exactly. Then there's, you know... What? What? That's just kind of weird. Of course, I, I would think if you love your wife, you'd want a picture of her anyway. <sighs> just get a divorce, man. Mm -hmm. People didn't divorce like they do now. I don't give a shit. Just do it. <laughs> Throw her in the well. They did that in 1922. <laughs> you can do it in 1982. So he sets up this d computer thingamajiggy, the word processor. Yeah. It's not really a computer. But he has to put the disc into it. Yeah. Which was one of those big old floppy disks. Only he says that his disks aren't floppy, they're hard. I No sexual pun intended. I think it was intended. I don't know. So he turns it on and it says, Happy birthday, Uncle Richard, from John. And he's like, well, it sort of works so far. So then he types in the words, My brother was a worthless drunk. 
And the, it's funny because instead of hitting enter, you have to hit the word execute, which he thought was kind of a funny word to use, execute. Right. And as he hits it, of course, it prints out on the page like word processors. There's processors. <laughs> is that a word? <laughs> it is now. All right. Or supposed to. That's how word processors worked. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's looking at that goddamn photograph again right. of his wife. So he types, uh, my wife's photograph hangs on the west wall of my study, which right. is really pret- pretentious sounding. It's probably why he's not making much money writing books. Yeah. The west wall. Come on, man. Just it's hanging on the wall. Don't be so... So he writes it, then he clicks delete. Right, because he realizes it's a stupid sentence. Right. And guess what happens? The picture disappears! Dun, dun, dun! And he uh, he immediately calls the police. Because somebody has obviously stolen this photograph of his wife. Yeah, he's been burglarized. Burglarized? (laughs) I can't say that. (laughs) So then He's he, been robbed. No, nah, he doesn't. He just types it again. My wife's picture hangs on the west wall and hits execute this time. He doesn't type it. Oh, yeah, he does. <laughs> and it comes back. Like magic. Wow. It's magic. And now, all of a sudden, the transfilmal smell is kind of strong on right. bits of smoke all coming out. So he decides to turn it off. Doesn't he turn it off right there? I don't know. I don't know. No. Then he writes, my floor is empty. Then he clicks insult. Then a set for 12 20 dollar gold pieces in a small cotton sack. Why is that what you want? I don't know. How much of a hassle is it going to be to get... To exchange the 12 gold... I don't know. Do you know a gold man? I just ask for a million dollars in a small unmarked box. I mean, if you had a bunch of gold, what would you do with it? I, I don't know. I don't know if I'd sell I don't have coins. a gold guy. Why not? Everybody should have a gold guy. I mean, I have a gold dust. <laughs> <laughs> that only makes sense to wrestling fans. <laughs> um, and sure enough, he hits execute and the gold pops up on the ground and he's flipping out like he should and Across the screen, the screen, the old the old overload pops up. Right. So he that's when he flips it off. Gotcha. I know he flipped it off, not flipped it off, but turned it off. <laughs> I don't know how you look that thing. Maybe it's a flip, a switch. I know, but I'm not talking about flipping a switch. What are you talking about? Flipping it off. What? Flipping it off. <laughs> no one can see you. I know. It's a good thing. <laughs> So obviously he calls his navel, and the guy goes, "Does the machine work?" He's really like omin- ominous about it all. Yeah, the old neighbor. He's like, you know, just remember he was a kid, and it's like, okay, well you're the one that said he was a genius, so why are you all of a sudden saying he's a kid? Right. And he's asking the navel to come over and so they could talk, man on man. And the neighbor says, no, I think I'll leave that between you and John. Hey, what, do you, what do you mean by that, man? Yeah, I don't know. Have you been, Has he been testing it out? <laughs> maybe. Maybe he's had it set up. Maybe that's why he doesn't have to worry about maybe anything. Maybe he's the guy who made it. Maybe so. I don't know. I'm telling you. There's some type of Doc Brown, Maldi McFly, Kevin Spacey scandal happening in <laughs> here. What doesn't he want known? Uh, yeah, I don't know. And then before he hangs up, he goes, just remember what I said, for Christ's sake. Be careful. And he hangs up on him. Yeah. But like, why, like, why? What did you say? That was just so... tell me, man. Yeah. Why are you being a dick? Because he can. Why not? <laughs> so he uh, looks up how much the gold is worth, and he weighs it. I think he does. Right. And, he and looks it's like, up. oh yeah, this is this is gold. Like, why would fake gold pop up? Yeah, I guess he was just making sure it was really... And I think he wanted to check to see how much was really there, how much it was really worth. Yeah. Because just because it's a $20 gold coin doesn't mean it's worth $20. <laughs> I mean, I would, I would be impressed if, like... It was worth $20. If anything popped up. <laughs> the gold chocolates from uh, Gwenny's Button Bots popped up. That'd be okay. Yeah. Be quite all right. Where the, are they the weight loss ones? Oh, yeah. All chocolate is weight loss. All right. So he goes back to the shed and he uh, he turns the machine on and he gets the happy bill for the Uncle Richard from John. And he's just looking at it like, what the fuck has my 
uncle gotten me into. <laughs> his nephew, not his uncle. No, he's his uncle. I told you this is about time travel. <laughs> <laughs> he is his own grandpa. <laughs> uncle cousin <laughs> yeah none of these things matter he could be his uncle it wouldn't change anything true <laughs> true my uh my nephew has an uncle who's like three years younger than him uh, which one uh how oh. one of them oh uh all of them well because my brother James, he has his kids, right? Right. Then his dad had a young little kid after he had kids. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. So not related to you. Not related to me. Gotcha. That's yeah. why I was trying my, to figure my, that out. I was uh, like, my what? mom just had a kid last week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then never mind. I get so it now. see, it, it, could it could happen. It could happen. I, I've heard of it happening. My, it's just uh, weird. My, yeah. It is weird. It is. So then at this time when he turns on the machine, it starts to spark again. And he realizes it's not going to last much longer. You know. Like, what? Do, like, cooling pads not exist in the 80s? No. Nothing? No. Oh, he he will make this shit count. At this point, he's sitting at his desk, right? And he right. hears his, his kid comes come in with his bandmate. Right. So I guess it's not, a, it can't be a shed. No, it's like a separate room. But it, at one point they say it's not connected to the house. Yeah, I don't know how that works either. So. Does he have like a baby model in the kitchen? What's uh, happening? Yeah, though? I don't know. Either that or they just walk past the door of the other room. I don't I know. I guess. But they'll, the kid and the, his friends will talk and shit about his dad, how he just wastes his time goofing off in his study. Right. He's a no good, worthless fool. <sighs> so they get back at him, he writes... My son is Seth Rattled Hagstrom on his world processor, and he deletes it, and immediately the son be stops talking. Yay! <laughs> Yay. <laughs> but in his mind, he's going, I didn't kill my son, I deleted him. Yeah, as if that makes it much better. I mean, I would do that to some people I know. Yeah, Just I know. delete them. Delete. I don't know if I would delete, but I would definitely try to change. Like backspace a few things yeah maybe i would what would you, what would you type i don't know well, some things you would write on this build process all well i definitely would ask for money what kind of money any kind gold? of money I, I don't think i would ask for would gold would you I ask think I for just... a gold guy no you would need a gold guy if you had gold <laughs> not that kind of gold guy i think i just asked for cash would you ask for gold full cash? <laughs> no. <laughs> I would ask, I don't know. Uh, I would ask for a, my own chain of gold full cash. <laughs> Friends, it's I don't know. I would ask for a dog that didn't make noise anytime we laughed. Aww. You seem so excited right now. He was very excited. He heard gold and he came I running. would, uh, Ask for more patrons on all Patreon <laughs> at www.patreon.com slash PMM Publishing. I wouldn't ask for less shame because I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would. Who would you delete? Donald Trump. What else would you delete? I don't know. Uh, poverty, cancer. Hey, she's shaking so much. She's excited. I would delete. Uh, James Paddleson, um, <laughs> that guy who has that talk show I don't like. Oh, him? Jimmy Fallon, yeah, he's useless. Uh, I don't know. I just, I, I would, really think. I would just type myself and see what happens. Don't delete yourself. That would be silly. What if I added an, an eye? <laughs> I have a third eye on my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> This podcast okay. sucks. It doesn't suck. <laughs> he just got off the rails. A so little. he so he kills his son. And he's like, hell yeah. He runs around his he runs around his house like making sure he's gone. And it's like he's he was never able to begin with. Why don't he just type? You know, I my son is like responsible and quiet. My and, son, li uh, re re yeah, respects me. Yeah, and hit execute. Wouldn't that have been better than just deleting him? I don't know. <laughs> I, yeah, I, don't know. I have a happy life. Yeah, exactly. Well, then it's like that, those meek skeet sees right. from uh, Rick I'm and Moldy. Mr. Meek sees. You gotta be more specific. What does happy mean? Yeah. You can't say that. Exactly. I want to be satisfied with life. What would that mean? 
Yes. That's impossible. It is. Exactly. So I think, yeah, as he's uh, looking around for his son, he begins to get, like, a stomach cramp, I think. Right. right. What does that mean? I don't know. It means he ate too many beans for dinner. <laughs> I don't think that's what it means. It could. I would just write, I can eat as many beans as I want with zero consequence. Execute. That was his final wish. <laughs> Before the computer exploded. Yeah. One at right. My old process will not overload. Yeah, I don't know why he doesn't, you know. It's like the same thing. Yeah. Like with genies. I want more wishes. Yeah. Do nobody that. ever Nobody ever wishes for my wishes. Why not? It's not like you have to sign some fucking long Apple agreement that says... <laughs> Genie, U- Genie Eula. What? A Eula. What the is us- that? The usage language. Is that what that's called? Eula. You're the only one who knows that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the only one that knows You're them. the only one who reads those things. I don't even read the damn thing. You read thing. them all. You get the magnifying glass out. Of course. Jeez. I love the legalese. The what? Legalese. That's not a language. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> he's still just, he's just running around his house screaming, I deleted them, I deleted them, like a lunatic. Right. And that's when his wife comes home. Right. And she's changed. Since she has. They, since they didn't have a son, something horrific has happened. She's, she's gotten battle. She is now like 300 pounds. Oh my god, that's the realest thing that could happen in a Stephen King book. <laughs> Holy shit. She doesn't even have feet now. She just rolls like a bluebill. <laughs> but she opens the door for her and she comes walking in. She's holding this gigantic turkey and he just stares at her because, of course, she's gone from being 180 to 300 in, you know, the space of and one evening. It would be like doomsday. It's like doomsday for him. It's like the realest thing he could ever imagine is his wife's gain more weight. But he's staring at her and she's like, what the hell are you staring at, you doofus? <laughs> and he's like, that's the biggest turkey I've ever seen. He's not talking about the children. <laughs> he's not talking about the poultry in her arms. <laughs> but she's like put it in the freezer and then they make it a point to oh, say yeah. that they never had a freezer before oh yeah <laughs> when we had a kid we never had a reason to have a freezer what are you talking about <laughs> what does that mean I don't know I, I don't know if they have like a special deep freezer like a an what, what, extra freezer I don't know was that like a thing in the 80s yeah. like huh are we gonna have a kid or should we get a freezer? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's because they just have the extra money because they don't have to pay for the kid that they can afford a freezer. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but it was just, it's just like, okay, that, what? Was, that was random, but okay. But yeah, it was the Thanksgiving bingo, like you said. Right. So there's this thing. See? Haha, Thanksgiving story. Unless you're listening to this in the future, in which case. Oh, well. Okay. Enjoy your turkey. <laughs> and she's like, uh,. So, does that gadget work that you've been fooling with? Yeah. And he says, no, no, it doesn't. And she's like, let's go watch game shows or something. Nah, she wants to go to bed. Oh, okay. And he doesn't want to go with her. No, he's so disgusted. (laughs) Was Tabitha overweight? She's not the skinniest person in the world, but she's not real fat. What does she think of all these stories? I don't know. All these old short stories of his... Anytime it's like about a, like a blue collar family, the wife is always a hideous fat lady. Yeah, I don't know. Did he like completely ignore her when she was pregnant or something? <laughs> Probably he was writing this. <laughs> he was busy writing bold process all the gods. <laughs> and before she leaves, she's like, why don't you write a Nobel Prize winning short story or something? I owe money on my reading glasses. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know you could buy reading glasses on payment, but okay. <laughs> it was a, um, that thing. That thing? What do you call it? Like that came out? Oh, like layaway? Yeah, it was layaway glasses. <laughs> so he goes back to the thing and he uh, turns on the unit and this time the CPU doesn't hum, nothing like that. It begins to make this, like, strange howling noise. All right, well, that's definitely getting ready to crash. Why not give it some time to cool off? Yeah, I don't know. Wait until tomorrow, for it, crying out loud. It's like the universe is in flames. His wife is his gain more weight. He needs to fix this now. Right now. He's fallen on his knees on the beach, and the Statue of Liberty is an ape. 
it's, it's, it's red adult time. <laughs> so he types, uh, fuck, what does he type? I'm lost. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. My wife is Adelina Mabel Warren Hagstrom. And he hits delete button. And he right. types, uh, I am a man who lives alone. Right. And then he hits the insult button to add, except for my wife, Belinda, and my son, Jonathan. Right. And at the whole same time, the computer's overloading. It's giving him, like, computer yeah. overload, 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 he overload. He keeps trying to type. He keeps flipping out. Right. Like, why are you being so goldy? Why do you have to do, I am a man who lives alone? Right. Why don't you just say. I live with Belinda and Jonathan. Right. I, yeah, I don't understand. If your computer's crashing, would you spend the time to type out long, involved sentences, or would you just create the shortest <laughs> sentence possible? Funny thing, in the uh, this ep- this story was adapted for a Tales from the Dark Side episode in right. season one, and during this scene in the show, for some reason, they changed what he types to, I live with my... Beautiful wife, Belinda. My beloved, Be- yeah. My beloved, beautiful wife, Belinda, and my wonderful son, Jonathan. Yeah, it's like, what are you doing? Put out yeah. adjectives. Come on now. You're running out of time, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I thought it was just the funniest thing, but you added that to the script. <laughs> what is that helping? It helps the five seconds they needed to yeah. complete the episode. <laughs> exactly correct. <laughs> So he hits enter, he, and then he types it again, and he hits enter, and over the CPU's catching on flames, it's overloading, it's giving him all sorts of errors. And then he realizes, oh man, I fucked up. I could have typed all the bugs in this build process, so it fully worked out before they brought it over here. Well, I have ideas for at least 20 best-selling novels, Well, my family and I are going to live happily ever after. But it's too late. He's uh, he's, he's cashed in on his wishes. He's, he's cashed in on his gold. And uh, yeah, the machine overloads. Now, that fiery inferno. This is something I don't get. Like, okay, he doesn't have a son now. But one, but before he does that, I live with Belinda. He deletes his wife. Right. Why does nothing else change? Like, why would he still be in the same location? Yeah, I don't Do you know. think he would still be in the same house? Yeah, I don't know. Would he have a shed separated from his house to ride in? You would think his whole surroundings would change. Well, Everything about his life would change. I would think so. But, I mean, you know, I don't know. He would look like at a fat camp counseling kids. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he'd be happy being a high school English teacher. At the same place? Why not? How many freezels would he have? <laughs> a, he doesn't have a kid. And B, he doesn't have a wife. He is fucking ankle deep in deep freezel. <laughs> That's a small deep freezel. Yes, it would be. That'd be the most shallow deep freezer ever. It would be a shallow freezer. What the fuck would you put in that besides feet? <laughs> lean cuisines. <laughs> feet and lean cuisines. That is the name of my sex tape. <laughs> Um, I don't think I want to know. No, I'm just kidding. It's called um, I don't think I want to know. <laughs> <sighs> so the computer it fucking dies for, for death. It dies it for di- death. It dies for death. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, Rusty. <laughs> I'm Rusty. Yes. Uh, I'm also Max. Uh, and after it dies, you hear someone go, Dad. Right. Dad. And he looks up, and it's Jonathan. Right. And the last request built. His right. wife is... And Jonathan says, I, why did I use such cheap parts on this word processor? I should have known better. Right. And, and Richard says, well, maybe next time, son. <laughs> you know. But now, would he, have, would he have made that machine if he wasn't living next to Dr. Brown, pedophile I guy? I don't know. So if the machine isn't made, then how did any of this happen? I don't know. Oh, shit. Quit butterflying affecting the story, okay? Well, don't call me ass and good girl. <laughs> I, I didn't. Oh. <laughs> Goddamn strange dog. <laughs> Why Just are you randomly so smelling the front weird. door. Like the crack of the front door. <laughs> Stop smelling cracks. <laughs> And they're like, come on, Dad, let's go drink some cocoa. Right. And they go, all right. And they uh, walk up, and that's the end. My, yeah, that's the end. And we get a happy just, ending. 
the thing is, is that guy kept warning him, don't forget, he's just a kid. Well, where was the ominous part of it? I mean, he got what he wanted. I think that's just how he is. Maybe so, but it was like, okay, I expected something, like, bad to happen. I don't know, maybe. I mean, I know, you know, it's a short story and he ran out of words, but. I, I'm. Uh, yeah, there's nothing ominous at all about it. I think that's just the the guy's personality. Like maybe he built an ice cream shop, and like when someone buys ice cream, he's like, "Don't forget, it's just milk." <laughs> I don't know. It just he could have just taken a wrong turn. You know what I'm saying? And ended up where his prophecy came true. You know, like you wished for this, but it turned out that that wasn't happening. Are you wanting like an evil genie trick? Going yeah. On? Like, will you do, uh... This is a horror short story. I mean, he doesn't have many happy endings. Uh, this one he I does. Know. I know. It I mean, it was published me. in Playboy. They're well, all they're, about, happy, they're all about happy endings there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, as we just already mentioned, it was um, an episode of Tales from the Dark Side. We watched that this morning. We did. For like the fifth time now. Yes, we've seen it a couple times What did you think before. of it? It was very well adapted from the thing. I like how they handled all the exposition of what happened to his brother. Because in the story, he's just in his head, you know. Right. Backstory. Isn't it, isn't it just conversation with the neighbor? Yeah. And then this one, the wife is talking to the neighbor as they're carrying in these huge boxes. So She isn't helping at all. No, because she's sitting there shoving food, shoving food in her mouth. Yeah. Because that's all fat people do, you know. I think it might be true. I can definitely shove some food in my face right now. <laughs> it's about lunchtime. Well, that is true. We could shove lots of food in our face. We could. But not Twinkies. No. Mm. Maybe some soup. <laughs> some soup. <laughs> not shoving soup in my face. That's how you get... Enjoys. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, that's about it. But in, I mean, in terms of his short stories, it was good. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah. I would recommend it. It's one of his better ones, I think. Yeah. It's not completely original i mean there was a twilight zone episode just there's like it i think there's a lot there's a lot of things that are like that but yeah i mean it wasn't so far-fetched some of his short stories you're like what the fuck just happened you know they're so far-fetched but this one wasn't a lot of his short fiction you could tell he was frustrated with his wife and this is one of them yeah she was probably <laughs> pregnant at the time or something or <laughs> probably <laughs> It was Thanksgiving. Right. She was at bingo. He had to deal with the kids. <laughs> but like, yeah. God damn it, Joe, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, that That's it, I guess. That is it. Yeah. How do we end these? I don't know. It's well, next we're going long. to be playing a song. Oh, yeah. Well, we're going to be playing a song, and then we're going to be doing some news about Stephen King, about... Us. Us, the company we run. About the dog. And we'll be talking about... Stephen King's new book Ooh. coming out next year in 2018. Very exciting. You don't know what we're talking about, do you, audience? Well, soon you will. Awesome. After this song. The name of the song is All He Ever, and it's by the band Krakatoa on the Sun Dripping Down the Stairs album. No? No, no it's the Sun Dripping Down the Stained Glass. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't it, see it, that far. It, it cut out after less TA. You made You're a good right. guess. Well, it looks like stairs. Yeah. Something sun dripping down the stained glass. That's the album. Right. So, all right then. Enjoy the song. And we'll see you after it's done.
the band Krakatoa with their song All He Ever on the Sun Dripping Down the Stained Glass album. So yeah, go look them up. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Now for some news. PMP news. PMP is, of course, Perpetual Motion Machine Publishing. Correct. It's a small press we run on a daily basis. It's just pretty much all we do. It's Daily, it's, nightly. It consumes our whole lives. It seems to. So the first thing that we have is Dark Moon Digest 29 is now available. Which is the whole magazine we publish three times a month. Three months a year. (laughs) Every three months. Uh, I'll let you talk. (laughs) In this, which is the seventh anniversary issue. (laughs) A married couple takes in a stray cat with surreal consequences. A man with a dark past finds the love of his life. The population's id takes on a personality of its own. A popular horror writer has a one-night stand with a person he would have been if born a woman, and two love-struck strangers wait out the end of days together. Um, There's also columns by Jay Wilburn and George Lee. The fiction is by Josh Mallerman, Sam Richard, Betty Rocksteady, Jeff Foles, and Ashley Schuerman. There's also an interview with Josh Mallerman in there. So it's a great, great, great issue, because if you've ever read Josh Mallerman, you know how wonderful he is and then ashley shuerman's little novella in here is just phenomenal yeah the rest suck though. no no they're all good i'm just (laughs) yeah you can find that on on amazon just right just google we type in the name dark moon digest 29 right we sell it on our website correct uh perpetual publishing.com slash shop right uh, you could also subscribe to the magazine by going through Patreon. For right. just a buck a month, you would get every digital issue that comes out. Right, as they come and out. And if you do seven a month, you would get the paperback subscription. Exciting. And to do that, you would just go to patreon.com slash PMM Publishing. Right. So even that's if the, you... That's the best way to fill this. Right. Even if you want to don't want it to get it yourself and you want to... You know, send the magazine to your cousin or your nephew or something who likes to read. Hey, that's a good way to do it. And well, that's an awesome Christmas present. send it to your uncle, to your, your uncle's, nephew's uncle. <laughs> your nephew's uncle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see that movie, The Stupid. Yes. With Tom Arnold. Yes. Remember that song, I'm My Own Grandpa? Yes. Oh, I love that dumbass movie. <laughs> dumbass <laughs> I handle Stan is not liked well, but I grew up just watching that all the time. Yes, well. <laughs> also, uh, we recently released Night Roads. Correct, by John C. Foster. Yeah. It is book two of the Libros de Inferno series. So, if you have read Dead Men, then you want to pick up Night Roads. And if you have not read Dead Men, we, at the moment, have it on sale on Amazon for 99 cents. For the Kindle version. Right, not the paperback. That would be outrageous. That would be insane because paper is not that cheap. <laughs> so yeah, if you read ebooks, go download it. It's 99 cents. It's called Dead Men by right. John C. Foster. And then, of course, after you read Dead Men, go read Night Roads. Yeah, and if you don't want to read Dead Men for some fucking crazy <laughs> reason... Then night... just go read Night Roads. I mean, it's, 
it's okay. You would understand it probably. It's right. mostly a standalone. They it do, is. They connect. They do connect. I, I recommend reading Dead Men before you do Night Roads. And then we'll be publishing the last book of the trilogy, Halloween 2019. So, I mean, you have some time, but you should do it now. You should go ahead and do it now. Do just it to, now. Just so you understand how awesome John C. Fowler is. Yeah, and if you want to buy the books from our website, I would recommend pledging on all Patreon because you get a 10% discount for Woo-hoo. anything we sell in the website. Yay! Also coming out super soon is Joe McKinney's Speculations. Yes. You are running out of time to pre order a personalized signed copy of the collection. So if you want to, you need to get on this shit soon. That would be a good Christmas present. Yeah. For so, yourself? Me? For, your, for I Max? Don't, I don't want it. Not for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have plenty of copies of it. <laughs> Do not buy this for me. <laughs> no, buy it for him, but then sell the book somewhere else. <laughs> um, so what would be the ULL for that one? It's on our shop. If you it's go on to the our, homepage. it's on the homepage, yeah. and if you click on it, it'll take you to the pre-order of speculations. All right, I think that's it for PMMP news. Um, one more thing I want to yeah. mention that um, we will be having a Black Friday sale, but our Patreon, our patrons will get early access to that Black Friday special. So if you want books at cheap prices, the best thing you can do is support us on Patreon to get that early access. Yeah. Um, also, if you have written something for my anthology, Lost Films, right. um, I'm We're halfway still to making final decisions. I have 90 unread submissions left to get to. Right. I have shortlisted 50, rejected 170 a lot. maybe. I have accepted five of them. I can't talk about those yet. But if you're waiting, just be patient. It's a lot for me to get through still, and I'm trying not to rush it. It's going to be a tough one, because I've already shortlisted 50. I cannot accept that many. There's no way in (laughs) God My God, can you imagine how big that book would be? Lost Signals was huge, and we did, what, 21? Uh, 22? No, I don't know. It was still, it was big. Jesus. And And most of the submissions have taken advantage of my 8,000 gold limit, too. Let me tell you. So, <laughs> not only does Max have to read them, but I have to read them too. So she says that, but she hasn't read any of them. I haven't, not yet. I'm. I will. I've been busy. Okay. Hey, hey, I make the decisions on Dark Moon Digest. All right. So just. Yo, okay. <laughs> Don't you okay me? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there was something else. Uh, I guess not. Um, not that I can think of right at the moment. Um, subscribe to our newsletter for sure because we're going to be announcing a new anthology we're doing next month. Yes. So that would be at pmmpnews.com. Correct. Yeah, that's enough. That's enough about us. That's enough joking off about PMMP. <laughs> Let's move on to some Stephen King. Woohoo! What's up on the docket first? Um, Stephen King's book. Uh, Pet Cemetery will be remade by Dennis Widmeyer and Kevin Kolsch. Who made the movie Silly Eyes. Correct. Also, Dennis is kind of my boss. Right. He's the owner of the Lit Reactor. He's the editor-in-chief. The editor-in-chief of the Lit Reactor yeah, and co-founder website. Of the so, writing website, yeah. Lit Reactor, which I write columns for. He, so, he makes good movies. Yeah, the Starry Eyes was pretty interesting. It was good. Yeah. I mean, it just was weird. Him and his friend kevin i think they always like a directing duo yeah they also have directed a few episodes of the mtv show scream i believe very cool which i've never seen i don't see that being a good show yeah i don't know i don't watch anything on mtv so but um they'll be remaking pet cemetery so that's kind of exciting uh yeah i think there's really no news about it no it's just also writing it i have to assume they are no i don't think so Huh. Yeah, I, maybe they'll just... Yeah, no, Jeff... Jeff Bueller is going to be the one making the script, the screenplay. He's already written the script, so they'll be just a... Jeff. Yeah. Okay. Not Very really cool. exciting. I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is either, but that's okay. Yeah. I know who Dennis is. Way to go, Dennis! And also Kevin, who I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so next up, we're going to be talking about Stephen King's next book coming out June 2018. It is called The Outsider. I randomly discovered it was already available on Amazon with the whole product description in place. And it is a long description. So go ahead and take it away. 
All right. An unspeakable crime, a confounding investigation. At a time when the King brand has never been stronger, he has delivered one of his most unsettling and compulsively readable stories. An 11-year-old boy's violated corpse is found in Town Park. Eyewitnesses and fingerprints point unmistakably to one of Flint City's most popular citizens. He is Terry Maitland, little league coach, English teacher, husband, and father of two girls. Detective Ralph Anderson, whose son Maitland once coached, orders a quick and very public arrest. Maitland has an alibi, but Anderson and the district attorney soon add DNA evidence to go with the fingerprints and witnesses. Their case seems ironclad. As the investigation expands and horrifying answers begin to emerge, King's propulsive story kicks into high gear, generating strong tension and almost unbearable suspense. Terry Maitland seems like a nice guy, but is he wearing another face? When the answer comes, it will shock you as only Stephen King can. Oh my god, do you think he really is having really an edible face like in Scooby-Doo? Maybe so, those meddling kids. <laughs> I hope to god that's the end. They just pull off a, a mask. <laughs> it's really Thomas Julius. <laughs> hey Thomas. Hi Thomas. Um, so, that sounds interesting. Yes, it does. Um, I've noticed Stephen King has been getting more and more into like crime things. Well, he did, yeah, he did that trilogy. Yeah. But like, is this going to be supernatural at all? Right, I don't know. Who could tell? Not us. We, Stephen King could tell. He could. Cause... Send us an advance Riddle's copy, man. Stephen, if you're listening, we would love to read it. <sighs> yeah. Well, no, I do not want to read it. No, we don't want to read it. Up. We've already read it. I never want to read... read it again. <laughs> we want to read The Outsider. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I mean, even if there's no supernatural aspect to it, I'm gonna say right, about exactly. It. Well, that makes me wonder: is there or is there not? You know, I'm fine without that. That's never anything I I require. No. I'm good with a good old fashioned crime novel. That's the genre I prefer of any. I think. I don't know about you. I like crime. Like, I, I grew if up you had to pick crime. any genre, you would have you would read. I I don't know. I grew up reading like mystery novels, so yeah, like novel crime stuff is what I like the yeah. most. I mean, I love Hill, don't get me wrong, but I think I just I like enjoy horror crime that does all. involve crime. I, I don't know. Yeah, that was all good. Yeah. I like horror with a twist. I don't like... I'm not a big zombie fan. <laughs> okay. Well, you're ass, so... I just... I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> zombie novels don't have twists. No, I don't... Most of the time, they don't. I mean... Have you read any zombie novels ever? I've all? tried, and I just don't like them. I've only read one good zombie novel, and that was a book... With a title, I don't know. <laughs> All the angels weep, something like that. Yeah, I know. I think I know what you're talking about. Um, weep, my angels. <laughs> Hold on, let's type. He's got to find it now. The Reapers, all the angels, a novel by Alden Bell. We own that book somewhere. Yeah, I think it's like right next to me. Probably. <laughs> That's a great one. I haven't read that in a long time. So anyway. Do you know what is a bad zombie novel that we will definitely be talking about in the future? Cell by Stephen King. <laughs> I've never read that that one. one is hot garbage, mm, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a fun episode, though. Mm. Supposedly, the movie also sucks, starring John Cusack and uh, Samuel Jackson. No shit. Yeah, it was made like on a zero budget direct to streaming. I want to know if there's a plane or snakes involved. <laughs> I don't recall either of those. <laughs> but maybe they added them. Maybe so. I think that's about it then for this episode. Uh, next week, I think, we'll be talking about what? We will be talking about The Dark Half. With John C. Fossil right. off the Night Roads. Will it be next week or will it be the week after? Well, this there's not many other weeks left in uh, the month. And we're not sure because of Thanksgiving. I don't know. Next episode. Up. Tell you, how about that? There you go. That's better. It'll be even sooner if we reach all Patreon goal of 300. Exactly. Because then we once... start recording every week. I kind of don't want that to happen. Oh, my goodness. But I do want the money. Hmm. It's a conundrum. And the money will go directly to... <laughs> Paying our fees to upload <laughs> yeah. these episodes. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay, whatever. So that's the end of this episode. So make sure to contact us. Our URL is www.castlerockcast.com. Our Facebook page is www.facebook.com slash Castle Rock Radio. Our Twitter handle is Castle Rock Cast. Our email is castlerockcast at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. 
To subscribe to our newsletter is www.pmmpnews.com. And of course, our Patreon page, which of course you're going to go subscribe to right now, is www.patreon.com slash pmmpublishing. And that's it for this episode. We hope you have a great week and a very happy Thanksgiving.